Mm-hmm. All right, so welcome to another episode of Inspired Content, where I'll be taking a look at the short story, The Day is Done, Lester Del Rey. Now, this is, it took me a moment, because this is a book of apparently science fiction stories. Um, but the whole story is told sort of from the experiences of a Neanderthal in the last days of a Neanderthal, written by an author writing about it in the 1930s, 1940s-ish. I don't see a date for publication on this one. Yeah, Asimov really wanted to talk more about the interesting facts about Neanderthals in that story. Um, the premise of this story was kind of interesting to watch. It's sort of like the last days of the last Neanderthal, as seen by somebody writing in the 1930s, 40s maybe. Um, so it's lacking in a lot of understanding of the actual science of that. Uh, the tendency to draw them as bow-legged, short-legged, long-armed, uh, hunched over, the classic stupid caveman Neanderthal look. Um, and us, well, I, the thing I thought was funniest about this story, to be honest, was the portrayal of Cro-Magnon Man, us, as being essentially... I like I kid you not, the dialogue was hilarious. I, I risk reading it almost just to share some of the uh, some of the way that they talk about the Neanderthal or talk about the Cro Magnon talking. Come, Harry one, get out of the cold, wet fur. You'll be sick lying there on them few leaves. And that's like the most primitive character. Like th- they they imagine that that's how Cro-Magnon Man all spoke. That they had this sort of like, oh, it was just it was just funny to read that sort of. Oh, it was just such a weird like imagining, and they they talk about uh, the development of the bow and arrow as a new type of magic that lets them throw. And it's like, it's like whole hog just figured out. <laughs> There's no spear to atlatl to um, uh, arrow slings to bows. It's just straight like, oh, we figured this thing out here. Check it out. Isn't it neat? <laughs> it's just a new magic. It's sort of like going from uh, the rotary dial old phone to suddenly having a smartphone, just not crossing in any of the steps along the way. I just thought that was sort of a hilarious thing. And they sort of have the like, sort of, I don't know that I would call it racist, but the tendency to view like, oh, well, yeah, these Cro-Magnon men just have everything figured out. They're just logically on their way to doing everything right to get to the far future. And uh, these Neanderthal character, uh, the Neanderthal character is essentially just a like clumsy oafish creature who's stupid and incapable. Like the, the practice stone heads that were chipped for the spears that the uh, Cro-Magnon men used were better quality than the Neanderthal ever produced in their entire lifetime on this planet. And uh, it's just like leaves for beds instead of skins. Just a whole bunch of like, just assumption that like, since they're not us, they're idiotic, incapable, sad animal beings. And like, it's funny. It's made even funnier by the fact that uh, the caveman, the uh, the Neanderthals' most frequent human interaction 
is a medicine man, a scientist among the cavemen. And he's played like the professor. He, he seems, he makes me think of the professor from Gilligan's Island, to be honest. Um, and he's always very friendly. And he's always like, well, we have to respect him. He's the last of his kind. And we came to this realm where they previously lived. And he, he and his people existed in this land long before us. And we, we are sort of guests in his realm. Kind of like, no, there's, no, that's a very anachronistic approach to a uh, philosophical approach to uh, other beings that one encounters in the realm around them. Um, and at the same time, it's massively patronizing. It's like, oh, these noble savages essentially is the way they treat them. And, you know, you are my friend. You know, he treats him like a pet. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, I can't get over how, like, it was just such a weird way of portraying that interaction. But overall, like, the story, the implication of being, like, the last one of your kind in the world was an interesting story to read. And it's an interesting portrayal of what it, what it can be imagined might have been some of the difficulties of being the last of your kind in an area where you know a huge number of people are spreading into that area and just taking it over and sort of having to become a kept creature because they're hunting down all the other animals and they're better at it than you are and like you're just the last holder on of your own kind and so that topic is interesting. Uh, the, the way they particularly handled it, I don't know if they did a great job with it, but uh, given the time that it was written in, I'll give them a, a fair amount of credit for doing a decent job. Um, it was still an interesting story to kind of get a feel for... It, it also has shades of that tendency of uh, like an older generation when they go to retire if they don't have something, there's that tendency to sh sort of fold in. Like there's this statistic that a certain number of, especially men who retire um, and don't have something to, somewhere to belong and places to do things, their mortality rate is much, much higher. And it's like, just within a few years of retiring, once they've no longer got a a job, an identity, or a role to play, they sort of shrivel up and die. And that's sort of what you see kind of being discussed to a certain degree in the character here. And instead of just being like a, a working man, it's, you know, my people are gone. I'm the last of it. There is no more of my culture here anymore. It's not a, a job. Uh, the absence of a job leads to the dying of a single person. It's the absence of a culture leads to the dying of the last person to hold that culture. And it's like it's an interesting look at both of those sort of perspectives on uh, being applied to the idea of Neanderthal in the realm of uh, modern day humans. So I, I, I would rate it better than night. I would say it's still probably not up there with uh, a Martian Odyssey, which is by far the best one out of this series yet. But I'd give it a top. I'd, I'd give it a easy second out of three so far. We'll see where it rates towards the end of it. I, I might do a list of ranking these at the end where I rank them by which one I liked best and which one's... Uh, I ranked worst. But overall, decent story with some potential for further exploration and story designs. So I will cover that in the next video where we'll discuss my top six story ideas inspired by The Day is Done by Lester Del Rey. So if you're interested in that, I will see you over in the next video. Thank you and take care if you don't.
Um, all right, so end video right there. There we go.